Imagine having the power to predict global events, from political riots to disease epidemics. That sounds impossible, right? Well, Israeli prodigy Dr. Kira Radinsky has become an international star for her ability to predict the future through award-winning software. Power Woman just might be an understatement when it comes to Dr. Radinsky. She started university at 15 years old and earned her PhD at 26. Plus, she just made it onto Forbes 30 under 30 rising stars list in 2015. Now, Dr. Radinsky's obsession with predicting the future has led her to start a new company. But we'll let her tell you more about that herself. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for inviting. So you have done so much at a young age, it's, it's astonishing. How, how did this happen? I mean, how, where do you get this motivation and inspiration from? Well, I never think about it that way, but my dreams in childhood would have always been to be a scientist. I was always interested about how things work and how can I make things happen in a much more motivational way, in a more positive way. Um, I came to Israel when I was four from USSR, um, part of the biggest immigration in Israel for quite a while then. We came with nothing and my mom was trying to plan to come to Israel just after the war is going to end. Everybody knew the Gulf War is going to start. So of course we came only two weeks before it started. So even starting then, I understood the need for ability to predict. So you have a doctorate in data mining. Can you tell us what that means in easy terms? <laughs> so data mining means taking all the data that we have as humanity and making sense out of it, using a lot of statistics and machine learning and building automated software to, to make sense, structure it, and make some kind of output out of it. Maybe it's predictions, maybe it's more explanations about what we already know. So speaking of those predictions, I understand that you actually predicted Cuba's outbreak of cholera uh, several months before it actually happened. Can you tell us about that? How did you do that? So the software I've built is about taking what we know as humanity and the knowledge that we obtain in the form of news, coming since 8051 till today. Afterwards, we started adding encyclopedias, we added Twitter feeds, uh, adding searches of people, and looking for events that repeat themselves. We built a system that reads all this like a human would do, using deep natural language processing algorithms, and looking for repetitions. One of the interesting repetitions that we saw is about, well, one of them is not that surprising, is that cholera happens a lot after storms. Now, that's surprising because it's a waterborne disease. But what we found out is a high correlation in certain locations. If there is a drought two years before that, the probability becomes much higher. And the reason for that, we were really interested about why it happens in certain places, but not in others. And what the system inferred is the fact that it only happens in countries with low GDP. Not that surprising. Right. And the other one was more about the fact that they don't have enough clean water. And the interesting thing is that if you have enough clean water, you can stop epidemics, especially cholera. You can drop mortality rates from 50% to less than 1%. So this was part of our understanding that cholera is caused by weather. We started getting more information from airport sensors to try to predict in a much better way, and not only two years in before, but trying to predict even a few months in before, trying to help uh, different organizations to be much more prepared for that. And did that work? Did people listen to you when, when you, you know, when you had the statistics essentially prove that the disease would break out? At that time, we were building a prototype. We were able to predict uh, Sudan riots. We were uh, able to predict those type of diseases. And today, we work in much more closer way on very specific problems, trying to get to a very high precision with those. Interesting. So you've taken this knowledge and the skill set that you have, and you have uh, created a new company uh, called Sales Predict. Can you tell us about what this company does? At one point, when I was looking at all the data and the predictions the system was making, I understood something very interesting, is that it's really good in understanding economics, but mostly macroeconomics. What happens in countries? When will prices of uh, global products will, draw, uh, will drop or not? And then I was really interested about really trying to model and simulate it. The joke we had at that time is that somebody who wins a Nobel Prize in economics just needs to think about one hypothesis and then test it for 20 years. Why shouldn't we build a system that thinks about thousands a second? Maybe eventually it will find this Nobel Prize winning hypothesis. And this is what we started building. But in order to actually understand economics, you need to get to a much more to a higher granularity. 
And for that, what we're doing is taking information uh, from companies, looking where they won in the past, where they lost in the past in business, and modeling that for them to understand much more how to drive more business for them, layering on top of that all the macroeconomic information we're gathering from the news events, the different uh, behavior analytics that we get from um, traffic to certain websites, what people are searching for, and different events happening and trends. I mean, so this tool that you've created is, is incredibly important for businesses, I imagine. It must be very widely accepted so far. Right, have you guys launched yet? Oh, yeah, we've been in business for uh, three and a half years. Okay, so. We've been working with uh, big companies like uh, G, Microsoft, Siemens, and a lot with medium sized companies as well. It's a ready made product from the shelf that people can use to optimize their lead qualification process from all those potential business that they can make and opportunities focus on the really smart ones. In addition to that, we started adding other information like how to run automatic um, marketing on top of that. And in general, how can that's you build... Huge. That's huge right now. Uh, it, it is very successful. I was really surprised about how predictive marketing is getting so much attention right now, how it is the next frontier, at least for a business. So. There are so many questions I want to ask you because this is very, very interesting. I just am wondering, how did you come up with the idea for this? I mean, where did this start? So I think the first prediction I always want to make is about uh, when wars start and when they don't. With time, I was really interested more about medicine. And one of the first things I was doing, I think when I was 14, I went to a summer camp. And we were trying to predict probabilities for cancer. And then I understood that many of the ways we work in science are not automated enough. We have so much data that can help us to make predictions in a non-random way. A lot, today, many things happen because a scientist thought about a hypothesis and then she tests it. I want to make this process the other way. I want the computer system to think about hypothesis and only the one which have higher probability that we should test them. And the world is moving that way. I'll give you an example. Today, uh, I've been working with the different hospitals in Israel and the HMOs trying to predict for every person in Israel the probability of cancer and diabetes based on the different blood tests and other tests that we've been doing for them. It's, a, it's very similar algorithms eventually, looking for correlations in those in a very efficient ways. This is just incredibly interesting and mind-boggling, but I want to change subjects a little bit and talk about the fact that in 2014, you were actually elected to light a torch on Mount Herzl. How did you feel about that, and, and, and you know, what did it mean to you to have that experience? For me, as I said, I came here to Israel when I was four, and my family came with nothing. You couldn't take any possessions you had in USSR, and they had to start their life from the start. They came from a place where they couldn't show any opinion, um, couldn't even work in most places because of anti-Semitism. And eventually, I find myself today lighting that torch and thinking that I represent something for the country that gave me so much. Everything I have till now, from the degree I got here, from every step over the way that I was uh, funded by so many people, I was encouraged. Um, and even the startup I'm doing right now, the spirit that the country gives to all the people here, I just felt proud that we put so much emphasis on science here that we really have a representative going on stage, lighting a torch, not only for me, but all the scientists and the people who want to do the extra step and take the risk, but also for all the people who came from USSR without nothing and eventually became a real big part of the culture here and rebuilt it. 100%. So our final question is, I heard that you actually have a black belt in karate. That's true. When did you have time to get this black belt? Oh, well, I have the same time as Marie Curie, like everybody else. Um, there you go. I started when I was five, pretty much because I didn't want to go to ballet lessons. And I like the fact about the spirit that it brings. Uh, one of the things you say at the end of a karate lesson is be loyal to your way. And that's deep. Think about what you want to do and just keep on doing that perseverance. That was going to get you really far. And it, I like being alive, doing both sports. And eventually, it brings me the peace and uh, motivation that I need in so many aspects in my life.
Yeah, well, to continue doing this groundbreaking work that you guys have been doing, it's, it's unbelievable. And eventually winning is also very fun. <laughs> I can only imagine that winning is fun. <laughs> we, we have to see you in action. Next time you come in, we'll have you show us some moves on the set. That would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for coming in, Kira, and uh, congratulations on everything that you've done so far. Thanks so much. And uh, looking forward to see what you do next. Thank you.